All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first workshop of PTC Hacks 3.0. I'm sure you're all excited to get straight into uh, the coding and working towards building out your projects. But one thing that's going to be super important for you guys, especially working in a group, um, is to keep your version control together. So keeping your code files organized. Um, and today's workshop will be presented by Zaid. Zaid is a software engineering student. He's currently interning at Synovus Energy, where he does data science and framework web, web development. He's co-founded a VR startup, and he used to be a mentor for Schulich Ignite, uh, where he's helped students in coding workshops. So with that being said, um, enjoy the workshop, and I'll let Zaid take it away. Thank you, Hiri. Um, back to you soon. Oh, I thought you were leaving right now, my bad. Oh, no, I'll just stick around in case I need to okay, help moderate or anything, yeah. All right, so uh, everyone ignore that uh, slightly awkward exchange that just happened. But yeah, uh, thank you for the introduction, Harry. Um, really, um, you know, very, very kind words from you. Uh, and um, yeah, so a little bit more about me. Um, I'm from the University of Calgary, and I think it's really awesome, actually, that you guys are participating in a hackathon. I wish I did more hackathons when I was in high school, but I didn't really know about them. Uh, it's really great experience and I did I've done a ton of hackathons now that I'm in university and it's pretty much what landed me my job currently and actually the startup that I founded was also founded through a hackathon so I think you guys are totally doing uh, the awesome thing here uh, we have a pretty small group here so I'd like to keep it pretty like informal so we can really just do whatever you want I have like some information prepared that we can go through but I think like I would just ask everybody here first like I guess how much do you know about git or github like, do you want me to go through my curriculum sort of that I developed, which is just like kind of from the basics, understanding it, or do you have specific questions? And we can kind of go from there. So yeah, like completely open to anybody, any suggestions for how you want this to go? Yeah, please just unmute and, and uh, express yourself. Harry, did, did I uh, scare him off? Yeah, I think they, uh, some people might uh, still be connecting and, and to, to audio and things like that. Uh, but why don't we start with kind of yeah. like the basics, like in case there's some people here who've like never even heard of Git before. Okay, so yeah, a few things in the chat. Okay, thank you. Uh, and yeah, I'll be monitoring the chat, but uh, just in case I forget, like, or I don't see it, just like unmute and like yell at me. Um, uh, interrupt me at any point or put questions in the chat. Like if you don't understand what I'm doing or you have some questions, that's totally fine. So I guess we'll address these. Can you go over it? I don't know anything about Git. Yeah, totally. Uh, we can, we'll, we'll launch straight into like a demo of what to use it. Hi, is Git and GitHub the same thing? Okay, this is this is good. These are good questions. I like this. Okay, so uh, we'll answer those questions kind of through the, I guess just like with what I've prepared. So let me just open up on my second screen here. Okay, so Git and GitHub are intended for different functions. That's the first thing we need to get out of the way. Before we know what they mean, we're gonna talk about how they're similar but different. Um, and now we can talk about it. Okay, so just keep in your mind that Git and GitHub are different. All right, so Git is like a version control system. And what it's supposed to do is track changes in source code during like your coding. And what it enables is for multiple developers to work on a project at the same time without overwriting each other's changes and messing up each other's code. And there's like some main concepts to understand that we'll get into, but that's basically Git is it's something on your computer for you to manage your code as well as to like kind of understand how others are interacting with your code and how they're like adding onto your code and taking away from it and things like that. GitHub is basically like a layer above Git where you can host that. Uh, we call them repositories, but you can host that shared space on the internet so that you and your team can really collaborate together. You can use Git without GitHub. 
Um, but you can't use GitHub without Git, uh, if that makes sense. So like basic introduction, TLDR, Git is a version control system and GitHub is the kind of abstraction above that that lets collaboration and all that good stuff happen together. Um, it'll make more sense as we go through it. But yeah, so the first things I guess we can do is, um, does anyone have a GitHub account? Yes, Harry obviously has a GitHub account. Yeah, anyone else? You do, okay. Or somebody just yeah, messaged and mentioned that they do. Uh, does anyone else? And if, if you don't, like that's totally fine. So because we have like quite a bit of time here and a pretty smaller group, we could honestly just like make GitHub accounts. What, what do you think, Harry? Like, and then you guys can follow along with what I'm doing. Uh, because there's like some finicky details with SSH and things like later that I'd just rather get out of the way and it'll be better if you do it now while I'm here with you. So yeah, if you don't have a GitHub account, we'll make one. Um, I'll start making one, but I have, uh, I have one, so I'm not going to go through with it. But yeah, I'm just going to open up another tab here. Okay, so this is what GitHub looks like, and it's essentially just a place for a lot of stuff. Uh, you guys can see my screen, right? So if you open it up, you're probably going to see something other than this because like, I'm logged in right now. But if I wasn't logged in, it would show something else. Like It would uh, just show like a static page uh, where really not a whole lot is going on, and you would have to click like sign up. And then you're like meant to enter it. Like they have like this weird like setup thing, to be honest, I, I'm not really a fan of it. Like I wish it was just like a normal form. But yeah, you just have to like enter your email and stuff. I'm not going to do this, but it's pretty straightforward. My only recommend, uh, my only recommendation is uh, in general, stick with the default settings, but use make a username that's not super corny. Um, you can always change your username later, but it's not really a good idea. Like, okay, as you can see, this used to be my username, uh, Big Z88. And I had to change it because my GitHub is like outwardly facing, like I have a lot of projects and stuff off there. So I just changed it to my name. But the thing is when you change it, your username is like embedded in certain parts of your code or how to access your code. And sometimes then like you can't access like your old code and you have to manually go in and change that. So just like make it serious from the get go. Uh, I'm going to check back in the chat. Did it, everyone made a GitHub account? Do they have a problem with it? Is, are they confused with like the settings and stuff? All right, if no one's saying anything, I'm just going to keep going. Let me just take a look at the monitor the chat here. Yeah, okay. So essentially, like, from there, once we have our GitHub account, Just a second, everybody. All right, it looks like uh, Zay's having some technical difficulties. So we'll try to give him a little bit of time to uh, to come back here. Um, I, I should introduce myself as well. I forgot to do that at the start. My name is Harry. Um, I'm a volunteer at PTC. Um, I'm going to be one of the mentors as well as one of the workshop leads for tomorrow. And uh, if you've just joined in now, 
uh, Zaid's doing his intro to Git and GitHub workshop. If you don't have a GitHub account, uh, please make one right now uh, at github.com um, so that you can follow along with Zaid as he presents it. Um, and we're just gonna hope that Zaid can uh, get back in. Uh, so I see a question in the chat. Do you know how to change um, your username on GitHub? Oh, it looks like Zaid might be back. Hey, Zaid, I don't think we can hear you. All right, how about now? Oh, yes, that seems to be better. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, um, I'm just going to stick to this computer now because that one seems to be not powerful enough to even run a Zoom meeting, apparently. But yeah, was there a question? Um, yeah, there was just a question in the chat while you were gone. Um, do you know how to change username on GitHub? Yeah. So the thing is, GitHub, GitHub is pretty um, well documented. So... Um, it says like online, you can just go to your profile page in the top right. Like if you hit your uh, profile photo, once you're already logged in and then you can go to your account settings and, and change username. Um, but like I said, like it's, it is, it is an operation that you can make, but it's not necessarily recommended because if you put links on your website or somewhere else with your old username, they might not work. Uh, they usually will, but they sometimes don't. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. Uh, did you accidentally like name yourself something or had an old name that you weren't too proud of. I mean, I suppose like not really any of my business anyway, but okay. Now with that out of the way, there's like something else we have to do just for like basic setup. Uh, and this is also pretty important. So I'm just going to share my screen again. Yeah, I searched this up uh, because of how well it's documented, but we're going to install Git and you guys can see my screen again, right? So yeah, we're going to install Git. We're going to go here and you select the build type that you have. I don't know if anyone here is using uh, Linux, so it's probably just going to be Mac or Windows. I'm on Windows right now, so I'm going to go through with it. And it's going to be like slightly different depending on what you, uh, you know, which machine you're using, as well as if you're 32 bit or 64 bit. But there's just a few kind of important settings here that I'm specifically going to want to focus on. And I'm going to change the screen share so that it Shows the installer as well. Um, we'll just do the whole screen. All right, can you see like the Git installer? Okay, so there's like this whole like thing at the beginning. You're just supposed to read it. I, I don't read it. Now the thing is mine isn't, I'm pretty sure since I've already installed it, mine isn't gonna give me all these like other, yeah, other options. What it wants to do is delete my old Git and make a new one. I'll just do that Um, just cause it might be time for an update anyway. But in case it gives you like some options, um, go through them. There's two specific options that uh, are kind of of importance. So there will be one maybe about default branch naming. And what it says is like, oh, should the default branch name be set to main or master? Just change it to main uh, if it's not already giving that to you. And then the other one that's more important is it'll say something about like path environment variables. You want to enable that. And then if, if it asks you, what does it want to install? And the key is the git bash. You want to install that. It's not strictly necessary, but okay. You know what? I'm going to say it's strictly necessary. Do install the git bash. If it doesn't install, do it again. Uh, and then once it's done, you can launch the git bash. And I realize I'm going pretty fast. So how are we following along so far? Where are we? I promise you the fun step is, is, is going to be just right after this. Oh, a bunch of stuff in the chat. My bad. Okay. Um, I see. Okay. How do I install Git Bash again? Okay. So if you just search up Git and you go to this webpage, you can hit a uh, 64 bit Git for Windows setup. And then there should give you the option for Git Bash at the end. Like, oh, do, uh, do you want to open Git Bash? I'm pretty sure it installs Git Bash by default, actually, uh, if you don't do anything. Does that answer your question? Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, and then once you're in, can you guys see like this terminal? Like it's just like a black screen. Okay, so to make sure that it's working, you can just type git um, status, I guess. 
And okay, so this means that it's working. Like this looks bad, but that actually means that it's working. So if you type something, like the, the way the terminal works is the first word is basically the application you're trying to run. So if I just put X, it's gonna be like, what is that? Like, it doesn't know what X is, right? I didn't set that to anything. But if I were to type something like Git, you like it's gonna give you this whole thing and it doesn't this doesn't do anything it's just telling you like okay git is installed on your um thing and it works and then we can it should also work in any terminal that we're operating in and as you can see it works which means it's installed properly so everyone just make sure you do this if you if you didn't install the git bash it's okay but make sure you open a command prompt and do it and i realize now are is anyone here not familiar with the command prompt has everyone like heard of it maybe seen it once or twice so so michelle you are or aren't i suppose the way i asked the question was a little bit ambiguous but um you're not okay so basically um the command line is uh what makes us software engineers feel like we're doing work um because it's like you know it makes us feel like we're hacking in the in, in the movies but essentially it's just a place for you to run stuff uh it's fundamentally where it is and it's a place for you to find stuff so as you can see right now this over here just describes where I am currently. And actually, I'm I'm going to hope that everyone here installed Git Bash because I think doing this in Git Bash is going to be better. So this just shows me where I am in my computer. And it's not a very good description, but I can find out where I am by typing CD or not CD, LS, which is list to just tell me where I am. And I'm pretty high up, like I'm literally in above the C drive. So if I do like CD, which is change directory and then do C, as you can see, it moved me into the C drive. And if you're not familiar with what that is, remember like when you go to this PC, the C drive is like your computer, like everything that your computer has is on the C drive. How are you feeling with the pacing so far? Like too slow, too fast. I'm gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna pick it up, but is everyone at this step so far? What was the latest step? Okay, so if you have um, Git Bash installed, which you should have now, like if you just open Git Bash in your like computer, then you just open this up and just type Git, and then see if you get this whole long message. And if you get some like message like command not found or something like that, then some something wrong happened. So just kind of make sure that you get this whole like uh, long message. All right, I'm going to, since no one's saying anything, I'm going to assume that everyone else is caught up. And now from here, we basically just want to find like wherever we want to put our code file. Um, but I really don't want to do the whole LS and then oh, I do this and copy and like all that like nonsense, frankly. So I'm just going to go into the file explorer here. This is going to save your life. Um, and just see where I want to do it. I made a folder called PTC already. So I'm just going to put it in there and I'm going to click up here. And I'm going to copy this whole path. And then when I go back to Git Bash, I'm literally just going to do CD, put a space, and then paste this in and press enter. What happened? CD, this, no such file or directory. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be in quotes, I think. Yeah, and now I'm in the correct spot. And if I do ls, it returns nothing because it's an empty folder. Okay, just seeing this question here, I didn't get the long message when I opened it. What should I do? Uh, w w what message are you getting? Is it just saying like no f no file found? Like when you type git and you press enter. Oh, uh, do you have it working now? P. Yeah, nothing is going to happen just when you open it because that's where like it's a it's an interactive process. You're supposed to type into it and it kind of gives information back. Um, so whenever you install something new that you're expecting to be interfacing with in the command line, you want to type the command in to make sure that it worked. OK, yep, got it. OK, awesome. All right. Now we're going to get kind of switch branches over to something a little bit different. And this is incredibly important because it's really what's going to tie together your GitHub account and like get on your computer so otherwise without that you can do whatever you want online and you can do whatever you want here but it's not really going to connect and that the, the whole point is to connect the two connect your computer and connect github online so that your changes are reflected 
accordingly. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called like creating SSH keys. And this might be a little bit technical, but most of it is copy and paste. And I'm, I'm actually going to put it in the chat because uh, GitHub has really good documentation for this. So like GitHub create SSH key. As you can see, I search this up quite often because I am often doing this with new computers like at work and stuff. Uh, creating a new SSH key and adding it to the SSH agent. This is perfect. So just follow this like one, two, three, four steps. Don't do like this weird note stuff. Do this command, like literally take this, copy it and just replace this with your email. And actually you can even just leave this with this like um, fake email in there. It's not like it doesn't do anything. That email is not going to do anything. It's not important at all. That's literally just a comment there at the end. So I'm going to take this and like put it in the chat. Oops, sent that as a direct message. There we go. So yeah, go to this page and like follow along with the steps. I will also be like kind of going through them. So if you hit this, you copy this, hit control C, and you can only do this in Git Bash. And then you paste it in here, right? And I'm not going to do it because I already have this set up and I don't want to overwrite mine. Um, and then it's going to use the email as a label, which like I said, the, the label is not important at all. And then it's going to ask you for a file to save the key. Just accept the default. So just hit enter. And then also, um, it's going to ask you for a password potentially. The, the password is not really important in my opinion. Like, just hit enter. Um, if you want to make a password, go ahead. Uh, I don't like making passwords through the command line in general. And then the, the step after that is essentially, uh, where is, where's the copy step? not this okay skip this entire thing oh this this is what i want okay i'll send this link in the chat as well so for this first link that i sent literally just do step um up to three here uh like the password step skip the password and then move over to this and this step is in github and i'll show that as well in a second and then of course you're welcome to ask questions because i understand i'm kind of doing something quite involved here Oh, and I realize I'm not monitoring the chat. I'm sorry. Uh, do I pull my own email or do I have to make one? Yeah, the email doesn't matter. You can literally just put nothing there or you can just put like a random word. You could just like put the letter X or just put your name. The only reason that's there is to identify that key as yours. But like, I'm assuming that if you're using a computer, you're probably okay with everyone on that computer being able to access your Git unless, like I, I don't really foresee a scenario in which you're gonna have multiple SSH keys uh, on multiple different accounts on the same computer. So yeah, I'll, I'll drop this in the chat. What does an SSH key do? Wonderful question. Okay, so basically it's a form of authentication. So you know how like, okay, so let's say like you're playing a game on like your phone and then there's a way for you to access the data on like your laptop. So how does, when you go to the website on your laptop and you enter in your username and password, that's the connection between your game session on your phone and your stats or your leaderboard on the website, right? That's basically what we're doing here. So what we just did is we created a unique fingerprint for your Git instance on your computer, right? So the Git on your computer now has some sort of identification. And our next step, which is the link I just sent, and I'm going to go through that as well, is taking that key and putting it on your GitHub account. And it basically acts as your username and password. So you don't enter a username and password when you push we're going to go over this terminology later, but when you basically post your code online, it's going to know that it's you. And that basically prevents other people from posting to your code. By the way, an SSH key that's generated through this method is private. So don't share it. And that's part of the reason why, like if I were to do this demonstration with you live, I wouldn't share my screen for this part because you can imagine what's going to happen if you see my SSH key. What you can do is you can type that SSH key into your own account and then you can write into my stuff, basically, potentially, um, if I'm thinking about that the right way. But anyway, um, now then the next step is going back to your GitHub account and coming over here on the side. And if you go to, I think it's just your profile. No, it's not, okay. It might be settings. It is settings. So if you go to settings and you come over here on the left side, you have SSH and GPG keys. So you go there and um, you click 
add new SSH key. And you can give it a title, it could be anything. And make it authentication key. And then you have to paste the key in here, but you already made the key, you just need to copy it. And the steps for that is in the link that I just sent. So this is the step, adding a new SSH key to your account. Step one, copy the SSH public key to your clipboard. You just copy this. Oh, make sure you copy this without the dollar sign. If you do it with the dollar sign, it won't work. So just copy this whole thing and then go in here and then just paste it in Git Bash. This only works in Git Bash because the clip command it doesn't work in every single command line. So make sure you have like this purple, make sure you have like in Git Bash, not this command line. So yeah, you put it in there, you hit enter. And oh, it didn't, it looks like it didn't do anything, but it did. Uh, if you get an error, then like that's a bit concerning and we'll talk about that. But if nothing happens, that means it worked and that it copied it to your clipboard. And then you're supposed to come here onto this and you're supposed to hit paste. I'm not going to do it because I don't want my identity to be stolen. Basically, um, you know, I've got a lot to live for. So yeah, I don't really want you guys seeing my SSH keys. But yeah, and then you just hit add and then you're all like set basically and it should work and you may have to like close your git and like open it again, but whatever. Okay, everyone following so far? Oh, okay, questions. Um, How do I open git bash on Mac? Honestly, I don't have a Mac, but uh, you could just try. I'm sure there's like some kind of file explorer. It might just be called bash or... Actually, Harry, are you familiar? Like, you kind of strike me as a Mac guy. Are you familiar with if the clip command and stuff like that works with just like the default terminal? I, I think it will work with default terminal, but I... Uh, yeah, Mac is way better for programming. Um, The only reason I use, not to discourage anybody, but the, the only reason I use Windows is because I do a lot of like 3D rendering and VR work and then Mac doesn't really support that uh, to the extent that I want. Um, Did you find it, uh, Aspen? Or Ayush, I'm not sure exactly who was. Oh, yeah, just Google. Okay, yeah. Google is going to be your best friend here. I, I would like to be your best friend, but I'm not sure exactly how it's going to go. But is everyone else kind of with it? It says use ZSH on terminal. If, if Yeah, if you have that already, go ahead with it. Like I was saying, Git Bash might not even, it's not even really necessary for Mac because the, the clip command and, you know, there's kind of other ways of doing things like that. I guess just to make sure, do you uh do you know how to open terminal on on the Mac? Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, I do. Okay, wonderful. All right, let me know if that works. Um, but then otherwise, I guess we'll uh, keep going. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, this is not my private SSH key. Um, th that's why I'm showing it. It's just like a, right? <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it only shows it once. And that's when you copy it. And this is like the public version of it. I really hope. But anyway, yeah. Um, I'm kidding. Yeah, if I, if, like... The, the the whole thing with these kinds of private keys is that it only shows it once and that's when you copy it. But yeah, I guess we can keep going now. So after all this like stuff, I would just close my Git bash and then open it again. I'm not going to open it quite yet because I'm going to start doing some coding now. I'm going to use VS code. You're welcome to use any code editor that you want. You don't even need a code editor actually. So maybe I don't even use a code editor, actually, just to show that you don't need a code editor. So let's suppose I want to write some code. Um, I don't exactly know what kind of solutions you guys are working on, but let me create like a Python file. Oh, let me just see what this, it copies to the clipboard and then, okay, let me go back. Can you quickly redo the step you, oh, which which step is it? Oh, it looks like you got it working. How do I generate an SSH key? Uh, are you on Windows or Mac, Austin? Actually, it should be the same regardless, I think. If you installed Git, then it should be the same. Uh, You go to 
generate your new SSH key, you take this command and you put that into your git bash. Does, uh, does that work awesome? And then like the next step is copying it, which is in this one. So I'll just put that in there as well. Yeah, so then when you copy it, then you go over here onto GitHub, which it seems I've now lost. But yeah, so you just log back into your GitHub account and then you come up here and you go to settings and you go to here and you click this and you paste it in and you just send it basically. Something's wrong with the GitHub, but I'll figure out I can't use the copy page. Oh, are you trying to do command C and command V or control C and control V and git bash? I think that, that may be the culprit. So yeah, um, you're, you're not supposed to, for some reason, I don't know why they don't really support this. Like it gets weird. You just have to right click and it should paste it. Let me know if that works. Awesome. Yeah, it's such a, like, it's, it's a massive oversight in my opinion, but I think with terminal, you're supposed to be super explicit with the way, like, I'm sure there's another way to do it without the, the mouse because the terminal is not supposed to use the mouse at all, but I digress anyway. Um, Okay, yeah, great questions, everybody. So yeah, keep asking away. Yeah, so that's how you add the SSH key. And now I, I actually, so there's two ways we can go about doing the next step. So either we can create a GitHub repository first, and then we basically add code to it, or suppose we already have some code on our computer and we wanna apply Git to it. So I don't know which one like you guys necessarily like have already done, but I'm assuming that since you guys are in the hackathon, I don't know how much coding you've already done, but have you already written some code that you want to put on or are, or do you want to starting or do you want to start from scratch? Any preference? Okay, we can start from scratch then, I guess. So yeah, basically what you're going to do is come here and I don't know why it's putting me on my wrong account. I don't think I want this account. I think it's my work account. I have to sign with my personal. Okay, I'm in. Um, so to start from scratch, what we do is we go over here and we hit new. Um, depending on what your GitHub looks like, it may be a little bit more difficult for you to find basically where this option is. But yeah, you hit new and you create a new repository and uh, this is a pretty good description. So it contains everything, including the revision history and you give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this like PTC test. And it doesn't have to be unique to the world. It just has to be unique to you, like your account basically. So you can make it public or private. I would recommend it public for now, just in case you have issues and I can like really just help you out maybe more easily. Um. The rest of this stuff is like not that important right now. We can always go back in and find these templates later, but you create it and then you have this and this is basically where your code is going to be hosted. Uh, everyone following so far? So again, this is the approach for if you're starting from scratch. If you already have code set up, then um, you, you want to do this essentially. But yeah, so now what we're going to do is something called a clone. And what that's going to do is take everything that's on this repository and put it on our machine, um, like our computer. But there's nothing in this repository right now. So you're going to ask, oh, why are you going to clone it? Well, the whole point is that's basically going to set up the connection between this, my account, this repository, and something on my computer. So I'm going to do it anyway. But ideally, when you clone something, typically, there'll always be, there'll be more stuff here. Like there'd be like, maybe like a few code files or like some, some like, um, you know, some pictures or other things like that. It's going to open up a new, new window. So I'm using these. Oh, I just said I wasn't going to use um, a code editor. Okay. So I'm not going to use a code editor. Okay. All right. 
let's let's go back to the PTC folder. So basically think about where you want your code to be on your computer. Go there, right click, and you want to open get bash here. So if you set up this shortcut, you can do that. Otherwise, you can do the other thing that we did where you can CD to it. And I'll just go over that. So you go here, you copy the path, you go back to git bash. I'll close this and you just type CD and then you paste in the path in quotes. If you don't do it in quotes, it might work, but it, it it's possible that it won't. Okay, now we're here, we're gonna type git clone and then we're gonna come back to GitHub and we're gonna copy this link. Make sure you're clicked on SSH here. That's That was like, cause we set up SSH, we wanna use that. Uh, and just like copy this thing and then you come here and you do git clone and you paste this in and then you let the magic happen. So it's cloning into it, this better work. Uh, you appear to have cloned an empty repository. Yeah, but we knew that already, so it's okay. I'm gonna take a quick look. No questions, are we all following? Where did you get that link from? It should just be here. Uh, when you create a new repository. And I can go over that again. Did you uh, create the new repository? Do you know if you did? Yes, okay. So it should be here under the quick setup if you've done this thing before. Otherwise, you can literally just copy it from up here and essentially like just kind of follow the format that I have. So it's always going to be git at github.com colon your username and then slash um, the name of the repository, which is like, oh, come on which is like this up here and then dot git. Does that make sense? If it doesn't work, then that means that like you named it wrong or like you set up your SSH wrong or you typed it wrong um, because what this is doing is it's establishing the connection between your computer and the, the stuff there, uh, the stuff on the internet. Okay, but there's nothing here right now. So let's let's write some code, right? So it says we've cloned an empty repository, which means like we're not really in anything. But I would just like to say if if I hit LS now, look, there's a folder called PTC test and it's blue. So I forget this step all the time. Like I'll start writing code here. Like I'll do like, oh, get something, right? Or I'll do get status, right? So get status returns like if you have a repository. And then this says, oh, you're not in a Git repository. But I'm like, wait, I just cloned the Git repository. That's because I didn't actually move into that folder yet. So I need to move into the folder. It creates a folder and you need to move into it. So CD, once again, just moves you to wherever you want to go. And if you just write CD and then the name of your uh, repository, it'll take you in there. And this is the key here now. So notice how there's this thing called main. Uh, that basically, that means we're where we want to be right now. And it means we're on the main branch. So in Git, you have different branches. And the whole point of this is so that other people can work on different branches and they don't bother you and mess up with your branch. So you can just kind of work separately and then come together in the end. Uh, in general, you don't want to do all of your coding on main just because like main is supposed to be like the one common place for everybody. But for now, I'm just going to put something there because I'm the only one on this repo. And main is where you would put stuff that everyone is going to need. So let's say I'm working on this with a few more people. And I'm going to have to do something like uh, create a file here and notice like where I am. I'm just literally here. I'm desktop PTC uh, test and I'm at desktop PTC test. This dot git just means that there's a git repo there. So, you know, all is well with that. And I'm just going to create a new file. We'll make it a Python file because I'm assuming that a lot of people here use Python. I don't know if that worked. It did not. No. Harry, do you know how to create, create a Python file through the uh, the file explorer? Because it wants to make it a text. Like I know there's a way to do it. Oh well. I think you have to like open it and like resave it or something. All right. You know what? This is this is a good learning experience for us. How to make a Python file in the Windows What what I search up here? Well, that's not a bad thing. Yes, okay, this is what I want. Oh. 
Rename the extension, and you're good to go. That, 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 okay. Just rename the files, bro. It's not that easy, but yeah, you can do the thing they suggested here where you can enable like hidden files and stuff or file extension. Yeah. So if you're on Windows, you can do file name extensions. I think this is done by default in Mac, but I'm not sure. Um, so I guess search up how to do that. But in Windows, you go to view, show, um file name extensions and then you can just manually rename it i guess or if you have a code editor even better do it through that if you change a file name the file might become unusable yes change it and i think that worked yeah okay so now it wants to open it in like some stuff i'm just going to open it in the default notepad python is pretty easy to write we don't need a fancy editor for it but i would recommend that you guys use sorry how did you make the dot git folder you don't make the dot git folder it's automatically there and that's how you know it's working so what you do to get that is you clone the repo so remember how we got this link uh you hit this and then you go to the git bash and you just type uh, i'm going to scroll up because i did it you type git clone like this line right here git clone and you what happened you made the dot git folder manually No, I did what you, okay, so then what happened? Let me show it. Uh, it might not be showing it because it's a hidden file. It should be okay. So the way to test that is to know if you're in the right spot is, uh, like I said, move into this in the command line, like desktop PTC, move into it in the command line which is the git bash basically. So you do that by typing CD and then the name of repo, which if you cloned it correctly should just be this, this little bit over here. And then after that, if you type a git status, uh, it, it should basically just be like, it shouldn't give you this error that, oh, this isn't a git repo, you can't do that. It should give you some, like, you're not gonna get this because you didn't add a file yet, but actually maybe, Maybe you did have a file. So yeah, make sure to add the file. Um, you don't necessarily have to follow along with this part, like in terms of hands-on, but I would recommend you do. But everything so far is good. Like I wanted you guys to have the installation with me because it can be difficult to understand. Anyway, so yeah, once we're here, we added a file and now uh, I haven't actually written anything in that file. So I'm going to write some stuff there. So in hello.py, we're just going to do like a simple print statement. I'm not even going to run it. And that's it. So I saved it and now I'm done. Okay, so let's say that's all for now. I want to put this, I want to save this basically. And then I want to put it online so that my friends can see what I did, right? They know that I did my part. Okay. So let's say I want to do that now. So what, you, what you're supposed to do is you have to stage that. And stage basically means you're telling Git, hey, I care about this file and I want you to track it. So you do Git add and then you can put the name of the file and that would work. But like in, in the future, you're probably going to create like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 files, right? So what you can do is just you can do Git add dot and dot means everything. So you're just telling Git, hey, everything that I just made, put it like get it ready to be put on the Internet. Save it basically. So you do that and it doesn't return anything and that's fine. But now see if we run git status before we did the git add, we ran git status and it said you have an untracked file. But now look what happens. New file, hello.py. So it's ready. Then we do something called a commit. And my advice when it comes to commits is do them often. And once you do something, do a commit. And the point of that is so you can come back to your last commit in case you messed up. So let's say I need to implement 10 features. In our mind, we want to do all 10 and then commit. No, you do one and then you commit. And then you do the next one and then you commit. And let's suppose you're on the fourth one and you realize, oh man, I messed up. I need to go back. If you weren't using Git, what would you have to do? You have to like try to remember what you did before or you have to keep pressing the undo button like a million times until you get back there. And sometimes it doesn't work because you can only hit the undo like 10 times or whatever. So then you're basically like, you're kind of screwed. Um, but with commits, you can just go back to the last commit and it's no problem for Git. It's like, oh, you want to go back like four commits? Sure. 
So basically the way to create commits through the command line is by just going git commit dash M and the dash M just means message. And then we put in quotes what our message is. So I'm just going to leave the message. This is my first commit. And then we get this little thing. So it says that we made a commit to the branch main. This is my first commit. One file changed one insertion. Um, it created this file. Okay. Now I'm going to refresh my page over here. And like, based on what I just said, it should put our code on the internet, right? Wait a minute, where is it? Okay, so the reason this didn't like put anything on the internet is is precisely like the question that somebody asked earlier, which is the difference between Git and GitHub. This has been committed on GitHub, but it's not, this has been committed on Git, but it's not on GitHub yet. And how we do that is we just write Git push. And it's gonna give us another error here, I think, or not. Okay, never mind. ignore what I just said. Uh, I'll show you when that error is going to come up later. But see, now if I refresh the page on my main branch, I have a file called hello.py. And if I click on it, it has the code that I wrote. Okay, we're in we're in pretty good territory here. Uh, everyone following along so, uh, so far? Any comments? Any questions? Okay. Um, you know what? For the next step, I think we make it a little bit more interactive. Who would like to be the uh, the volunteer, the guinea pig? Uh, so I know you've actually been following along so far. So because because I want to model inter, I want to model like kind of teamwork. So it works better if there's two people. So who's gonna do it? Who's caught up so far? Come on, don't make me pick someone. I don't want to do it, but I will do it if I have to. Wow, tough crowd. Okay, you know what? I'm not that mean. I'm not going to. Okay, uh, that's all right. Just received a message from uh, somebody asking about, or just kind of mentioning that they're trying to get the Python file on their computer. Um, you There's like alternatives as well. There's like other ways to do it. And like, I, okay, it doesn't even need to be a Python file. Like realistically, and I'll actually show this right now because it's a good idea. You can literally put a Word file on there or just a regular text file. I'll just put a regular text file. And text files are really useful in code repos. You can put information in them. Oftentimes in code repos, you'll see something called the requirements.txt. And that basically says like all the libraries that are required to run your code. So maybe just make a regular text file because I know everyone should be able to make that. Um, and then we added it, right? But if you go here, we need to do the same thing that we did before in our terminal. So if I type git status, look, there's this untracked file. So can somebody tell me what I'm supposed to do when there's an untracked file? And like, it literally says uh, what to do right here. In case you need a hint, whoever does it gets like 1 million points and I will uh, tell my boss to hire them on the spot. All right. Anyway. Okay. Get add. Uh, and then you can put the name of the file. You can just put dot to do everything and it's been added. So if we type get status again gone or it's it's been uh it's been added so no more red error that's all gone then we do git commit with the message this is my second commit and then git push that puts it on the internet so yeah that's just a quick example like i'm assuming like once you finally get your code working is going to be exactly the same you can put a word file you can put a picture here it could be anything a pdf uh whatever you want but typically it's code so yeah, I have some files here, um, looking pretty good. Now we're going to talk about branching because this is like the really the important part of collaborating is making sure that you and your teammates work on different branches. Uh, so there's two strategies when it comes to making branches. You can make branches for features. So for example, let's make say I'm making a game and I want to make a feature for like uh, adding like a character. I can make a different branch called character, but that's a bit more of an advanced technique because then you're using the branches and merging them in a lot more. 
Um, but what you can do for like another one is to just have branches for different people's names. So that's probably something that I'm going to do. But I'm going to show you how to do it, in my opinion, the right way, which is through here in the command line and not on the GitHub website. Uh, it's git checkout dash b and then you put a name for your branch i don't think it has to be i think it can be in quotes but it doesn't have to um so yeah i need to give my branch a name we'll call it branch one okay so we created and switched to a new branch together in this command and we as you can see just like it's been uh it's been it's been changed there as well any questions so far? Are we still good? Everyone sleeping? I was going too slow. Trying to catch up, LOL. No, that, that that's all right. Um, I might just pause here for a sec. If anyone has any questions, uh, yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, you'll totally have a, a recorded access to this uh, afterwards, as far as I'm aware. I know, don't worry, that's not an unrelated question. All right, so just kind of gonna keep moving along here then, um, but feel free to keep asking questions. So creating a new branch. And now the point of this is like when I mess around with stuff here, it's not really gonna affect anything else at all. Uh, so if I do something like create another third file, that's totally cool. Or, you know, more interesting is probably gonna be editing this file. So let's say I wanna print another thing. And now if I do git status, as you can see, I modified this file and I need to stage it. So I'm gonna do git add dot and then I'm gonna do git push. And look at the error it gave me. So this is actually like something I wanted to show. So basically it's saying that your branch called branch one has no upstream branch. Upstream means like GitHub on the internet. So it's saying that, okay, we have a branch called branch one on our machine, but I can't push it because it doesn't know what branch one is on GitHub. So I need to create it basically, or like tell it like that, hey, I have this branch called branch one on my machine that I care about and I want it to be on GitHub as well. That's basically what you're saying. So you're setting the origin to branch one of branch one. They should always be the same name. If they're not, you're kind of probably losing it. But yeah, now if we refresh the thing here, um, now you see, okay, we have two branches. I come here, go to branch one. Awesome. I want you to think of the branches as teammates right now. So suppose that like main is another, main is one guy, branch one is one guy, and we're gonna create a third branch later um, and kind of talk about that. I'll just reply to a question here. Oh, oops. Okay, anyways, moving along. All right, so this is where we are. Um, 
Yeah, so we made some modifications. If you'll remember on branch one, we added a line to this hello.py. Oh, wait, was it? What do we do again? Oh yeah, okay, so we added we added a line here uh, on hello.py. We did this and another thing. This is my second command. This is what was contained in it. And oh yeah, it's because I didn't commit. I just added it. So let me do that. Git commit dash m third commit and then git push. And okay, since the branch has been set up, it, it's gonna work. And when I come back here, yeah, so it says it pushed two seconds ago. And then this thing says compare and pull request. So what that means is basically like it wants to, it's it what it wants you to do is merge the two branches. So we're gonna do that. So now let's suppose that I was working on feature one and then my friend was working on feature two. This is when we merge them. So now we should have main, main should now have feature one and feature two. So it should contain all the code from main and all the code from branch one. And what you do is you scroll down here and you basically see what happened. So basically it's saying the first one was just hello world. And now the second one is hello world and, and this other thing. And when you hit unified, it'll show you what the final thing is gonna look like. So it's gonna take this out and it's basically just gonna be all this green stuff, which is what we want. We want everything. So it tells you that these branches are automatically mergeable, which is pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna create the pull request and uh, it should yeah so then we just hit confirm merge okay and now when we go to our main branch it'll contain the changes that we made from branch one okay so now we're both kind of working on the same thing but let's say we want to branch off again now let's say we introduce a third person so the way to do that is just create another branch um just going to switch back to main uh get checkout dash b branch two and let's say i make some some more changes over here like i just um add a new file or like i maybe i edit this file actually before i do anything there's like a really important step here So this says your branch is up to date with origin main, but it's not. Notice how when I open up this hello.py, it only has this one line from before. But remember after the merge, the hello.py on the main branch should have these two lines. And the reason that is, is because remember, there's a difference between Git and GitHub. We have to tell Git that there's changes on GitHub. And the way we do that is we do Git fetch. So look, it kind of spat out some information and it's basically saying there's like new there's new stuff on the main branch okay so then i do git pulls remember we did git push before to send from the computer to github and now we're doing git pull to send from the github to the computer git pull and it should integrate the changes so look uh, if we open this up again there's the two lines there perfect making sense so far hopefully i don't lose too many along the way anyway so yeah, let's go back to the other branch we created. If you ever forget what branch you're on or what the name of your branches are, you can type git branch and it just tells you what branch you're on right now and the names of the other branches, super helpful. Let's go back to branch two. Oh, git checkout branch two. And now let's make a modification to this file. So let's add something to it, add something to it. And then go back over here, git add dot, git commit dash m. So we're committing this uh, locally and just say added something to uh, the text file. And then I'm gonna push it to the remote as well. And then remember we have the same error as before because remember on GitHub, there's still no branch two. We need to tell it to map the branch two on our machine to a map to a uh, branch to on uh, on github i feel like yeah if i'm not explaining that well enough please let me know uh so we have more pushes i'm not going to pull them just yet because i want to show you something else
So let's say we make some changes here. So remember, we made some changes on branch two. So that's our third developer. But let, now let's say the second developer who's on branch one is uh, kind of wanting to, you know, play around and, and, and do some other stuff. So let's make, you know, some, some more changes here. Let's just copy some information from like a random website and put it in and then come here and take some of like this and like put that in there. I don't. It is just kind of for demonstration. Obviously, it's not going to be useful. But let's say you put some more code in there. Close it up. Come here. This is a different file. And we're going to do what we've done so far as well on branch one. So we're going to do git add dot, which is not necessary because we didn't add any new files, but I just like to do it out of practice. It doesn't do anything wrong. Um, added more... Okay, so now we have an interesting situation that's gonna go down. And the reason it is gonna be kind of particularly interesting is because we just made two branches. And now like what order should we pull them in? Is kind of like where a lot of people will struggle. Or like, suppose we even have figured out the order. Right. So let's say, OK, branch one, you know, th that guy's my friend. I trust him more. I'm going to do branch one into my main. Right. Let's do that. So it says it's able to merge automatically. No problem. Let's create the pull request and just do it. So it worked when it's purple. That means it worked. You come back to code and it's uh, if you go back to this, it, as you can see, it had all the changes that we made on the branch. Just one second. Sorry. Okay. Now let's do another pull request because um, maybe I care about what branch two has to offer. So I'm going to pull branch two into main. And as you can see, this is kind of blowing up in our face. Um, can't automatically merge. And the reason that is, is because we already merged something else in. So now it doesn't know what the priority is. Like, oh, should I overwrite what that person did? Should I add on? Should I um, let them do their thing? Uh, and I'm also going to talk about how like this step in here is not strictly necessary. If you're working alone, you can just do a git fetch, uh, a git pull. So go back to main, I suppose, git checkout main, git because look, it knows we're behind by two commits because we need to get fetch, so it knows. So now we're basically up to date um, with this. We can also do everything that I did over here through the command line, just because I think it's fun. I think it's git pull, and then you put the name of the branch you care about, which in this case is branch two. Uh, hang on. Oh, it's origin. Gen branch two. Conflict, okay. And this is what this is talking about. Cannot automatically merge. Automatic merge failed. So this is the exact same thing. So we need to do something about it. What is it suggesting that we do? There is a conflict in requirements.txt. Fix the conflicts and then commit the result. So the best way to fix the conflict actually is to open up the file in like some kind of code editor I like personally, because look what it's showing us. So normally if you open this, it wouldn't have this green and this blue. What the green and the blue is showing us is the two different conflicts that we have. Because remember, we can't just, you know, start overwriting each other's code. So Git wants to stop us. It says, hey, this is what's already here. And this is what you're trying to merge in right now. So what do you care about? Let's see the few options. So we can accept the current change. This is the current change, which would overwrite this blue stuff and bring in this or we can accept the incoming change, which will bring in this and just delete all of that. Or we can accept both or compare if we really care. I'm just going to accept both, you know, keep everybody happy. Um, and now, as you can see, it did, in fact, accept both. So this was all from the first one. And this was from uh, branch two. Quick chat check. We're doing OK. All right. That's yeah. And then um, merge conflict has been solved. And all we have to do now is do a git add git commit and say, 
merged the branch one into main and reconciled conflict. Awesome. Okay. And then we just have to push to the remote. And then if we come back here and we go here and we refresh this, oh, and it's right here. Merge the branch one into main and reconcile conflict. You're going to have merge conflicts. It's bound to happen. Don't freak out. Don't start. Okay, so some people, they'll see the green and the blue and they'll do something which is kind of stupid and they'll just hit like accept all from one. No, you got to look through it. Like it's a somewhat manual process. You got to look through it and be like, okay, my friend did this. I did this. And this third person did this. What do I want here? The case where this is going to be particularly tricky is if you have modifications, not just ad additions. So if you're working on a video game and you set the speed as 10 and your friend set the speed as 20, you're going to have to talk to him and be like, why'd you do it? Right? Because if your speed at 20 is, at, at, is better, like the character should be faster, then we got to talk about that. So, you know, this doesn't, this is not magic. Like it's all just like, you know, this process, like you still kind of have to communicate uh, effectively, but it makes things a lot easier. Um, now, the main thing with this and the probably the most important part is let's say we made a big fat mistake and we need to go back to the first commit. So I just typed in git log and that tells me like what all my all, my, all of my commits are. Um, it opens up like this weird thing that's like a writing editor. So you can't just hit enter. You have to hit WQ and that's going to take you out, I think. But yeah, these are all the commits. Um, wow, I didn't even realize we made so many. But let's say we want to go back to one. Like this one. I actually forgot how to do that. So this is going to be a learning experience for me as well. But if you want to see all the commits on GitHub as well, uh, there's a way to hit history somewhere. Yeah, the reason I'm not super familiar with this is because I don't actually use GitHub at work. I use GitLab. Where's history? Uh, you can hit the, uh, you see where it says oh. commits under the code? Just like that little like reverse C kind of, yeah, just click that. Yeah, look, look how genius this is. This is because this guy went to Waterloo and I, I just went to UFC. Nothing against UFC, but. But yeah, so we can see all the commits here and there's like this important thing here, which is the commit details. This is just like this uh, ID that gets assigned to uh, every commit. Basically just telling um, a way to identify the commit. So how to revert to a previous commit given the git, uh, what's it called? Like the, I think it's called an SHA, yeah. The SHA ID. And you know what, actually, I'm gonna do this in ChatGPT because I think everyone here should use ChatGPT for stuff. I'm not saying cheat, but I'm saying um, it's important and it's really helpful for things like this because otherwise you're gonna search this up and you're gonna get this big long article and you're not gonna know how to do it. But uh, it, this is is super awesome for it. So look, it's literally just it's literally the, just the word re, uh, revert if you want to go back to that, or you can use soft, which basically what it does is it moves like your branch there, but it doesn't actually change what you did, um, like what your files look like. I it has its merits, um, but I I'm not gonna go over that right now. So it's just get re revert. And then we just have to give it the ID of the last one. And I'm just gonna go, I'll go back almost all the way to the beginning and just copy this. Copy and then come here and I'm gonna paste it in now. And I think that should work. What? Oh, it, it's a merge. Okay, yeah, it should have been an actual commit. So I'll do this one. Yeah, because a merge isn't really a commit. Like it is, but it's really just bringing things together. So the, the, the problem that Git has with that is like you need to specify that you wanted to go back before the merge. If I want to go back before the merge, I can just go to like this one because um, merge the branch one and re reconciled conflict. Uh, this was the actual merge. So the one right after that or the one right before that. So let's say I want to go to this one before I added something to the file. Um, so just get revert. But yeah, I hope my mistakes aren't really distracting you guys because uh, this is part of the learning process. Mm, another merge conflict. Let's open it up. And this will happen because it's trying to it's fundamentally like work on a, a few different branches. So what we did is a merge. Which file is the merge conflict in? Merge conflict in requirements.txt. Let's quickly open it up. And 
Yeah, I meant to open this up in my code editor, so I'll do that. By the way, guys, VS Code is probably the best code editor right now um, for beginners. So just do that. Not sure why I didn't show the conflict there. Hmm, certainly odd. Hmm, just specifically trying to think of what's exactly is happening. Hmm, not possible because you have unmerged files. But if I open this in the text, it gives me this. So yeah, I'm just going to manually reconcile the conflict. I don't want this in there, so I'm going to take it out. And I, this is like the stuff that was incoming. So, you know, I don't necessarily want it either. So I can basically just change it, if I'm not mistaken, to what exactly I want it to be. So something like that. And I think that should work. Yeah, there we go. And now we're back. So if I hit get log, we basically just made another commit from before that first pull request. Um, I think I might've lost a few people there, but what are we saying so far? And yeah, that's basically it for the presentation. I know that wasn't super fast. I think it was maybe like one or two more things I wanted to touch on, but you know, just in the interest of time, I think it's probably a lot more valuable to ask you guys what you wanna do. So yeah, if you're stuck at any point now, like I can totally help. Or if you have like a specific idea that you want to do and you don't know how to do it, I'm totally all ears here. Yeah, I believe a recording of the meeting is going to be sent out later. Um, and, you know, you're welcome to, like I said, like, I would, I don't know if this is against, like, the rules of the hackathon or whatever, but I would totally chat GPT stuff when you get um, a little bit confused. Like, the good thing with it is, is, like, if you make a mistake, what you can do, and this is super helpful, is just do something like, like, let's say, let's say I had a merge conflict, I didn't know what to do. You can put the tag verbose, if I'm not mistaken, and it'll give you like a lot more description. And so that's easier for a human to read uh, and sometimes easier for AI to read as well. So you can just copy, like, let's say, for example, I got stuck here, right? I would copy this whole thing and I would paste it in and it would basically just tell me like, okay, you this is where you messed up and this is what you have to do. You're welcome. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I feel like, Probably lost uh, quite a few people there, but, you know, totally open for questions now. If you're even on, like, step one, um, please don't get discouraged. Like, Git is super powerful. Probably wasn't, like, as seamless as I would have, uh, like, wanted it to be. But, you know, that's just kind of the nature of, like, these online presentations. Um, yeah. Harry, anything more to add? Uh, I was just thinking if any of you are stuck on a particular step in the process still, um, now might be a good time to to ask. Well, well okay. So here, you can help me. Yeah, I, I see this. How do I do a git push? So did you already, did you add a file? Like on your local uh, repo? Yeah, okay, awesome. So now there are basically three steps that come with it. So after you add a file, first you need to tell git, hey, I want you to track this file. So I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen again so I can go through the commands. I'll actually just do it with you. So let's say I create a new file. Right. And that I want to be on uh, Git later. Create a new word file called new word file. And um, what sometimes people, they just do Git push there. It's not going to really like 
Oh, this pushed the last one. That pushed the last commit. Perfect. Up to date. Okay. You get status. So look, there's we modified that file and we also added a new file. So we need to, there's a three-step process. We need to add the files. Let's so get add dot, which adds everything. And then you do get commit dash M. And this is like committing it. So you're basically like storing, you're capturing this moment in time of all your files so that you can come back to this exact moment. So you do get commit dash M and then you just give it a message. So a new word file. And then once you get this, it says, okay, we changed the files and we made a new file and we uh, made some deletions in the file as well. Uh, because remember there was some other steps there as well. I didn't put anything in this word file, but you could, if you wanted, then you just do get push and it should work. And then when you go on to GitHub, uh, come back to code and it's right there. Did that work? Awesome. Okay. You're well on your way now to being a Git master. And Git is super important. Like, um, there was a person at our company uh, where I work now who didn't use Git. And she decided to leave because of like kind of personal reasons that she just didn't really want to be in the industry anymore. And she had been working on a project for like six weeks and we lost all of her code because she didn't use Git. And so some guy, some poor guy had to come in and use, like, just try to redo all the work that she did and wasted six weeks of his time. Unfortunately, it, it does not. What do you mean? Work. Oh, okay. Um, Please send me the error you're having. In the meantime, I'll address the other question. How can we make the most of Git and in general and for the hackathon? Okay, so two-part question. In general is to just use it. Like use it, get used to it. Anytime you do a coding project, like at all, use Git. My advice is commit often. If you're working in multiple branches, which you should merge often and make sure that your main branch is clean. I probably should have done a better example of that, but the main branch should be the branch that you can show your boss. And like, it's not messy. Like it basically just has the thing that you're ready for. So let's say we're making a website and the website's going to have like two pages. I'm going to make a main branch and put the first page on it, right? And the second page is going to take me like a week to develop. I don't want my boss to see the second page before it's done. So I'm going to make a new branch called page two and keep working on that, keep working on that. And I'm going to keep committing and pushing to that branch so that when my boss looks at it, he can only see what's completed because maybe he doesn't want to see the incomplete, like kind of half completed work. And then once you're totally done, then you merge page two branch into the main. So main should, main should be clean. Those are my three tips. Commit often, merge often, and keep main clean and every coding project you do make sure you use git and then as for the hackathon if you're collaborating it's pretty much a necessity otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to be on these like begrudgingly long phone calls talking to your friends like oh um what parts of your code should i take what parts of my code should i take can you send me the file can you discord me the file oh the, the file's too big use like this google drive and all this nonsense can i ask like does anyone have any hackathon ideas and um ask when like if you could send that screenshot over, then I can like kind of help you diagnose. Like, I mean, a screenshot from here. I mean, but yeah, does anyone have any projects that they've decided on? If you don't want to like share that. Yeah. And also like for, for the hackathon, um, another thing just kind of occurred to me, which is like, you will make mistakes because of how fast you might be going and you might have to go back. And if you commit often enough, when you go back, you only lo lose like 10, 15 minutes of work. But if you commit once at the beginning and then like, you're like, oh no, I made a mistake. I have to go back and I can't click undo anymore because I, un un I, I, I can't do it anymore. Um, then like, yeah, you're, you're kind of like cooked, like, um, because you're you're done. Like you're basically just gonna have to try to remember what you did like an hour ago or however many features ago. And um, yeah, good luck with that.
Yeah, I was just answering a question in the chat right now. Um, so yeah, any more questions you guys are uh, welcome to ask or you're welcome to leave as well. Um, and of course you can you can stay and like maybe share your screen or anything like that if there's like a specific issue that you're having for the for the last like seven minutes. But yeah, does anyone know if they want to study like software in the future? Or kind of work within tech? I don't know. I think maybe I didn't make it super appealing. But don't worry, you do way more exciting stuff than just use Git all day. All right. So it sounds like we have some undecided voters. That's all cool. Um still got five minutes left. I mean you're you're welcome to leave, you're welcome to stay. Yeah, here you ended up staying. Yeah, just to uh to help out if you needed anything. Thanks. Yeah, it was a <laughs> yeah good having you there for moral support when the <laughs> rest of the call was pretty quiet. Yeah. Um. Is there any remaining questions from anyone for for Zaid? If not, uh, we can we can end the call. Um, yeah. Just so you guys can get back to. It. Any questions about how to make money, how to go to uni, how to get jobs and stuff? I will, oh, so in, in terms of the recording, uh, once it's been processed, we'll be sure to get it um, to you somehow through the, the Discord where all the other information is. Yeah, and if you guys have questions, by the way, uh, with Git going forward as well, um, we do have a help channel in the Discord you can send a message to, and um, someone from one of the volunteers uh, will try to answer it. And tomorrow during the day and also in the morning and in the afternoon, there's a couple of uh, bug busting sessions that are like scheduled times where mentors will be online to help you sort of live if you want to share screen uh, to help fix bugs as well. Um, so be sure to utilize those resources if you need them uh, for debugging anything. Oh, and you can post co uh, coding questions into the forum. Uh, you can see on the side of the Discord server, there's this little forum section with these big threads, um, just so you can you can get help faster too, because everyone can see those and uh, people will be in similar situations to you um, and you can get help from, from mentors, but also your peers. So yeah, the forum um, is a great place to post your, your coding question. All right, if that's and it, then yeah. Okay, so if, if that's all the questions, then uh, thanks so much, Zaid, for sharing uh, your Git workshop with us. And thanks to uh, all of you for attending. And hopefully you guys pull together some neat projects at, at the Hackathon. Yeah, I look forward to seeing them. All right, bye, everybody. Yeah, see you, Zaid. Bye. Be sure to check out the workshops tomorrow as well. There's a lot of really uh, interesting content there.